Okay, welcome to the show. This is Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner, and we are going to explore investing in Bitcoin, especially from the mindset of a stock investor. So we're bringing on Andy Tanner because, as you all know, if you've heard the show, he's the expert, and I'm the guy that learns on the show. So, Andy, why don't you Not come always. on the show and, <laughs> and Not help always. educate us on Bitcoin? But, but Andy, before you do that, uh, a couple things, uh, some legal information. This is not legal advice, especially since we're talking Bitcoin. It's so controversial. Uh, this is this is education purely. So keep that in mind. Um, one other thing that's probably weird. In fact, I had to ask Andy before the show. Is Andy every week gives away a course, um, zero to cash flow, and and it's a phenomenal course. He's given it free. It's in the description. Highly recommend it. But I had to ask Andy, does this course even apply to Bitcoin? Can you learn the lessons from this course, zero to cash flow? Can you use that, the lessons there, and apply them to Bitcoin? Andy, can you just clarify 100%. that? Real quick? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so I'm not a, I, I wouldn't call myself a crypto expert. There's, I, I'll disclaim the heck out of that because there are people you could listen to that know a lot more about crypto than I do. And you wouldn't have to look very far to find that person. But on the other side of that coin, um, no, no, no pun intended with Bitcoin, but on the <laughs> other side of that coin, um, there are ways that I have used uh, Bitcoin to cash flow. And just as people are surprised uh, that you can cash flow a stock, instead of just buying it low and selling it high, you can actually draw cash flow from it. There are about, uh, there, there are many things, you know, three out of, or two out of the three main ways that I'll pull cash from a stock can also be done with Bitcoin uh, because the, the mechanisms are identical. The risks are looked at the same way. The rewards are collected the same way. The actual process of click and get paid, you click a button, you get paid instantly, exactly the same um, so these skills are transferable 1000% that I can tell you with confidence and we've, right. we've done it. I, uh, Bitcoin is not something I've decided to build a major position in my position in Bitcoin has been minor, but one of the biggest reasons I, I bought some and started trading, uh, options on it were just to educational to teach because so many of my students wanted to do it. Uh, and they said, well, if we can, they knew all about crypto and they said, well, if we can cash flow it, we want it all the more. So, uh, zero to cash flow apply everything taught in that course can be applied to, uh, the large cryptos. Now, if you have some new crypto that some dude in some arcane small place is just starting, it's probably not optionable, but the thing, the big ones like ETH and, and Bitcoin are certainly optionable for a hundred percent. They've been for years. So, Andy, I want to dig into the having, I want to dig into the ETFs, but something that, that I've never told you is I think it was just last week, Robert, you know, he bought a bunch of Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, he, he really believes the having ETF are going to skyrocket the price. He didn't just buy a bunch of Bitcoin. He then took some of the company money, bought a bunch of Bitcoin, and then he, he actually challenged everyone on our staff to get a Bitcoin. So. Uh, it's not just an exciting time for Bitcoin. It's a it's a whole new thing for us to learn at Rich Dad as well. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, Bitcoin. I I think that the smartest thing a person can do when they make these decisions is to pursue the education path rather rather than the advice path. And I I have a rule in my life that the the less I know about something, the least likely I am to invest in it. The more likely I am to start studying before I invest. So I've done a fair amount of, of study on crypto and my, my philosophy really hasn't changed. My philosophy is cash flow. And, and so I think the way you would attack the question of cryptocurrencies is from a big picture perspective, not a micro perspective. So let's start big and maybe narrow down over the conversation. The, the first thing that I think a person does before... Like, I'll tell you what would be more valuable to most people than buying a Bitcoin. Buy the cash flow game and start there. Uh, if I were to have my choice to give my, my sons, if they could only choose one, 
And if they chose a Bitcoin, you know, for whatever, you know, however, what the price is of that today or a cash flow game, I'd have them buy the cash flow game because it's worth more. Mm -hmm. There's more value for the money in a cash flow game because what the cash flow game is going to teach you, I mean, it's more valuable than gold. Uh, there, there's no asset more valuable than financial education. There's just isn't. And people that don't understand financial education say, well, you know, you're just, you're just trying to hawk Robert's games. I don't get paid to hawk Robert's games. It's generally an important thing. And here's why. What you do is you start with a dream and you say, I want to achieve this dream. And what vehicle you use to get there is of no consequence. There are many paths to heaven. There are many ways to become wealthy. And so the question I have is, will that provide me a passive income above my expenses to exit the rat race? Now, once I'm out of the rat race, maybe I want to buy a bunch of Bitcoin as my dream and sit on a big pile of net worth cash. But there are three basic things I think we ought to decide at the outset. Your goal when you invest could be number one, cash flow. That's my number one. I want cash flow. Number two would be a capital gain. I'm going to buy something low and get rich because I think the price is going to go up. And I'm going to study trends and be a technical analyst. And then number three, which I think Bitcoin has the strongest case for, uh, most people are in number two. Number one, most people don't know how to do. But but the the idea of a hedge against a weakening dollar and a place to store wealth as an insurance policy against a disintegration of the U.S. dollar. I think I think where gold I think gold and Bitcoin have a kinship in uh, in that it can be used that way. It's also a, a, a way to store money and transfer large amounts of money. Um, but I, I will I, I, well, let, let's let's just unpack those three ideas. Okay. If you're going to buy Bitcoin, are you buying it? For cash flow, are you buying it because you think the price is going to go higher? and Or are you buying it because you think, I'd like to have a hedge against, uh, against tragedy? So the idea of cash flow in Bitcoin, I think, is going to be completely foreign to people. Do you want to dig into the second one, capital gains? Because I think that'll that's what people are used to discovering. And, I, and what I want yeah. to know is... How does the, do you want to explain the ETF that just came out and how does that help you with capital gains? Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. So most people in the world, uh, invest for capital gain. And that's one of the reasons, you know, I, I think when Robert, you know, he'll often describe the, the stock market as I will, by the way, in terms of 401k stuff, because those are all capital gain guys. They're all trend guys. You know, I'm not a trend guy. I understand technical analysis, but I'm not interested in short-term, but I'm not a house flipper, a house flipper. There's, I have friends that flip a hundred houses a year. They're good at it. They make money at it. So it can be done. Um, but I, I don't want to try to buy low and sell high because I'm not very good at it. And, and the problem is, is once you sell, you're getting rid of the asset. So the question on gold is when do you sell? For me, it's when I have to when I have no choice, because it's insurance. If I sell my gold, it's to buy other things. And this is really important. Uh, let's stay big picture for a minute. My opinion that is more, I think it is more important to think about how you serve people than what you have. In other words, the more people I serve, the more effective I become. Not the more stuff I have, not the more stuff I have, that's not the principle the more people I serve. So let me give you an example of this, of how to think about this as an investor. When my sons came out of, of junior high, we brought them home for a year of homeschool. And one of the fun activities we did is I went to the gas station and we put a nozzle in there and filled up the car with gas. You know, he's going to be 16 someday, have to learn how to do it. <laughs> and we came and we looked at how much we spent at the gas station. When we came home, we open up my American Express statement and we added up how much our family consumed in terms of fuel. And it was a big number. You know, a lot of basketball practices we go to, right? And it was a big number. He says, wow, dad, we consume a lot of gas. I said, okay, but what do we produce? And I pulled out my brokerage statement and we have a, a good amount of shares of ExxonMobil, a good amount. 
And he looked at how much money I get in cash flow, not selling the stock, not having the price of Exxon go from you know 50 to 100 since COVID. Not that. That we don't touch. We just looked at the amount of money we received in terms of cash flow from dividends, from selling gas. And obviously, I'm an option seller too. And it dwarfed it, right? So we're a net producer of gas. Well, let's say the world goes to hell in a handbasket. If I produce food, clothing, shelter, and medicine, what the hell do I care what you pay me with? Because if Bitcoin is the thing, you're going to hand them to me eventually because I'm a net producer. I'll get the Bitcoins by earning them, not by capital gaining them. Uh, I'll make my money, you, the, all the whatever currency you decide to sell on, whether it's ETH or, or whatever, I'll accept because I have the power of production, if that makes sense. If yeah. I have real estate uh, and Bitcoin becomes a thing, great, then pay me in Bitcoin and I'll get it. I'll acquire it. So positioning yourself in the world as, if I gave you the choice, let's make this really simple. If I gave you the choice between a golden egg and a golden goose that laid golden eggs, which would you choose? And how long does it take you to decide that? You, you always take the goose. Okay, so which which does Bitcoin represent, a goose or the egg? I feel like it's the egg. Uh, it's 100% the egg, right? Gold is a golden egg. It's literally a golden egg. So why do I want golden eggs? Why do I have gold? The gold doesn't make anything. It doesn't provide anything. It, it can serve someone by giving them a watch. But but we want to understand why you want to buy the asset. And let's say Bitcoin goes from here to here. Well, do you keep it further? When do you sell? Right. And at what point? So is there an opportunity to become a, have an explosion of net worth? Yes. Yes. There's a huge possibility that a person that cares to just explode the, the net worth they have. If I have a, a Bitcoin and it's worth $70,000, let's say, and it goes to $700,000. I just got a lot of net worth, but it didn't change my cash flow. If I spend it, that Bitcoin, now I have money going out, right? So being very clear on why you want a Bitcoin and, and how the, I think the more important question is how am I going to serve people? Uh, I did the same thing with Apple. I said, son, let's see how much money we get by selling Apple products and AT&T products and Verizon products as opposed and by the way, thank everyone for, for that because most people, when they trade a Bitcoin or spend a Bitcoin or transfer Bitcoin, do it on those Apple phones through my AT&T network, through my Verizon, and through my Coinbase brokerage. So I love, I'm the biggest fan that Bitcoin ever had because if you want to trade it, you're going to have to buy all my stuff to do it. So thank you for, for buying all those <laughs> products. Uh, I love it. I love I love offering to everybody. I, I love I, I love it. So that's that's wonderful. So uh, of the of the three things you mentioned, um, and this is pretty fascinating to me. Robert Kiyosaki's plan is all three. He plans to buy now while while it's even though it's at its peak, it's low because everyone's also, saying with the having and the ETFs, it's going to go much higher. But then the plan yeah. is to save it until twenty twenty five when he can option it and turn it into cash flow. And then the third, the whole reason he got into Bitcoin is he is so confident the dollar is gonna go to yes, zero. I think that yeah. leads the pack. I think that, I think the biggest argument for that, and when we get back from break, I'm gonna poke some holes in it, not because I don't think it's a good idea, but because if you can't, like if I, if I can't show you what's wrong or what's dangerous or where the risks are in the stock market, then I probably shouldn't be teaching it because there's risks in every asset class. Like there, there's risks in having gold, believe it or not. There's risks in having real estate. There's risk. People have lost money in all these things. So if you can't say, how do I lose money in it? You're not educated to manage the associated risks. <clears throat> well, let's do that when we come back. But also, I really want to hear your strategy with Bitcoin, how you can option it. Absolutely. How you use it. I also awesome. want to know... It's freaking you just awesome. mentioned using stocks as one way to invest in Bitcoin, your Apple. Um, well, not invest in Bitcoin, but to benefit yeah, from, a profit it. Like, from it. 
Yeah, how you do you how mention do you... Coinbase though? And What's and that? Coinbase is a, you also mentioned Coinbase in that, and that's a direct, much more direct that's, way to. Well, if I'm the if if I'm the look, the bookie always makes the money, right? I mean, if if you want to be Vegas, it doesn't matter who wins the big boxing match, right? They just they're just going to take the spread, right? And so it's kind of like Wall Street, you know, if uh, if if you want to have a great model, you know, be Wall Street and charge fees for transactions. So if you're, you know, whether the Bitcoin goes up or down, make money off the trading of it. You know, I kind of like Coinbase for that reason. Yeah, that so makes we can sense. talk more about that if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, real quick, anyone that's taken Andy's course, Zero to Cash Flow, again, it's in the description. We'd love for you to leave a comment. Tell us what you thought Please of it. Do. Tell us what you yeah. learned from it. That, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to explore how Andy's using options to cash flow Bitcoin. And yeah. then I, and I, have, I have questions about the ETF I'd like to ask you as well. Let's come back and do it. All right. Sounds great. Welcome back to Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner. And we promised to tell you a couple things, how the ETF is being used, the Bitcoin ETF is being used, how Andy can cash flow Bitcoin, and also uh, how he's using Coinbase as a way to profit from Bitcoin. So Andy, what do you want to tackle first? It's it's funny about the ETF. Um, you know, I don't understand the ETF for Bitcoin myself. Uh, I can understand an ETF for oil and lumber and steel and and commodities and gold and silver uh, because, you know, most people, if it's a physical thing uh, that needs to be grown, harvested, mined and moved and shipped, like, for example, in the oil business, you know, if, if you don't if you're not a credit investor and you don't own the oil well and you want to speculate on the prices of oil as a secondary market investor. You're probably not set up to actually buy oil low and deliver it and sell it high. You don't have the trucks. You don't have the. So they have future contracts that they use. I think this is a really bad idea. Uh, the oil ETF is, if you remember, um, oil went negative. And the reason is, is what a future is. It's different than an option. Futures have no choice. Option literally means choice. It's another word that starts with a C. That means option, choice and option. It's the same damn thing, right? But when you do a future, there is no choice. You have pro one guy promises to buy it and one guy promises to sell it at some point in the future, which means that someone is promising to take delivery and someone is promising to deliver. Okay. So that makes sense with oil because, you know, most people don't have the power to actually go to Oklahoma where all those exchanges are done, right? They don't have the power to do that. So they do this future. Well, the problem with that is, is all of a sudden we have COVID and no one's burning oil. Like the planes aren't running, the cars aren't running, no one's burning oil. So everyone that promised to take delivery of it has nowhere to put it. The oil right. tankers are full, the, 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 you know, your bathtub is full of oil, you're putting oil in your fish pond. You're, wh where are you going to store it? And so what people would do is they'd actually pay someone to take that responsibility off their hands. And so actually oil went negative where they say, look, we'll pay you to take this off my hands. So actually, instead of having to pay for the oil, you received cash for your mere willingness to take free oil. Right, you right. got paid to take the oil. So, you know, futures are rough. Now, the gold ETF is different. It actually is backed by physical gold. A lot of people don't believe that, but it is. You can go there. It's in London. There's a there's the vault. All of the numbers, the serial numbers are there. Uh, you can't cash your stuff in for gold, but it's the closest thing to what a dollar used to be. A dollar used to represent a piece of gold sitting in Fort Knox, right? Or at the treasury, right? This is redeemable for gold. Difference is you have to have huge amounts of the ETF. It's called a basket to actually go and redeem the gold. You can't just take a dollar and say, give me a dollar of gold. But if you have a huge amount, you can. You say, I have a basket, give me this basket. It's an ungodly amount of money. Um, it can be done. So I don't understand the Bitcoin ETF. Someone's gonna have to educate me on it because I can click a mouse and buy an ETF that says its own Bitcoin, or I can click a mouse and buy the Bitcoin. 
I don't know. I don't know why I need a middleman for the Bitcoin, right? I can see where I need it for a barrel oil. I can see where I need it for a, a train load of corn. But if I can click a mouse and own a Bitcoin, now the price of Bitcoin will go up because some people are just more familiar with the ETF. They don't want to set up a a, a wallet. They don't want to set up a, a Coinbase account. They don't want to learn all that. But they can go to their brokerage and just click now nah, the ETF. They see that's easier. Uh, so that lack of education of how to buy a Bitcoin creates a market for a middleman. More people will get exposure to it uh, only if the, it's backed by bit, you know, actual Bitcoins. There's some little, some will be backed by futures. Stay away from those. We, we could have another podcast on fancy jargon called Contango and backwardation and all that mess. I don't think we want to go there right there. But if you don't know what those are, then you're investing in something you don't understand. If you if you're investing in a in a in a fund that is maintaining their price, trying to do it through the futures market, you should know what contango is and you should know what backwardation is. Otherwise, you're investing in something you don't understand. Now, the oh, you, I was going to answer your cash flow question, but go ahead. I yeah, real quick. It. So I have set up a Coinbase account, and one. I found it confusing. I had to go find someone that understood these things. But two, once I took a picture of my license, proved I was, and, and all that extra steps you have to do, when I used my Coinbase account, I could only yeah. invest a little bit at first. Then I could yeah. do a little more. Then a little more. So it, there's handcuffs on it. Eh, that's probably the wrong word. But when I'm doing ETFs, and I should say this, I don't have any Bitcoin ETFs. <clears throat> but when I do invest in ETFs, through the stock market, I don't have all these uh, crazy rules and, and questions on I who I am. I, that's strange because I I've never had any constraint on on buying. I I I have owned Coinbase as a stock, but I haven't used it as a customer. I've been a producer, not a consumer on that. Uh, one of the ones I used to use is Ledger X because they were one of the first that offered options. Gotcha. And you cl you click a button and you get a you get a Bitcoin. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. The you. You get it in 20, you get a future that gets it to you in 24 hours. You got the Bitcoin. And what I loved about that is I could use my stock strategies for cash flow. In other words, I, I've not bought Bitcoin that I haven't been paid to buy it. Right. 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 And so the first Bitcoin, I, well, that's not true. I bought a Bitcoin when it was $300 a, a coin way, way back just to learn, be curious. When it hit 10,000, I says, honey, I think we bought one of these like five years ago or whatever it was, right? So I'm trying to find all my little key passes and right, right, which right. brokerage or which uh, bank, you know, which which wallet was in. I found it. It was there. I go, oh my gosh. I, I remember buying one of those, I thought. But when it was around 30 or 40,000, I bought another one. And uh, I bought it, just one, just to show people how to trade it, right? So it wasn't expensive. And uh, we got paid to buy it. And we made thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in cash flow simply promising to buy it low or promising to sell it high. And there's something called a probability cone where I'd say, look, based on how Bitcoin wiggles, it's, it could go to, you know, I mean, I remember when it was like at 50, I said, all right, if it goes to 65 in three weeks, I'll sell it and make 15 grand. Cause I don't think it's going to get there that fast and get paid. So you can sell covered calls on it. You can sell cash uh, secured puts on it and you can get paid to buy your Bitcoin if that's your thing. So what I like about it is if I want to have a hedge and I want to own some for a hedge, why not get paid to buy it? And if someone gives me an offer, I can't refuse and I can get a big capital gain. Well, maybe I'll play that game and get paid to sell it as well. So it turns it into a cash flow. And while I'm exposed to it, I still have the hedge. So, you know, that that was a fun experiment to do. Am I going to build a may is Bitcoin going to be a major part of what I do? Not really. I I'm I like my circle of competence. I love owning, you know, trillion dollar companies like Apple. Uh, I think that people will give me their Bitcoins when they want. Like I have this company called Kraft Heinz. And if Bitcoin goes as big as the dollar and replaces the dollar, they're still going to want to eat. I have a I have utilities <clears throat> that provide the electricity that is the lifeblood of a Bitcoin. So my mindset is production. And great, maybe I miss out on the huge opportunity of it going from 70 grand to 700 grand. Maybe I maybe I wish I'd have bought a, you know a thousand bitcoins, but 
eventually they're all going to go in the hands of the producer because the way things work is the more people you serve, the more effective you become. And if you're serving lots of people, those Bitcoins will find their way into your life or the ETH or the whatever it is. Um, if I were to poke holes in Bitcoin, uh, the first thing I would warn people of is, is Netscape. Uh, there was a protocol called Hypertext Transfer Protocol where 99% of the people, I would imagine, or more, uh, if you were going to get on the World Wide Web, you used a Netscape browser. Uh, my kids don't even know what a Netscape browser is. We still have Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So we might still have uh, blockchains. <clears throat> but if you look at ETH and what ETH can do and compare it to Bitcoin, what Bitcoin can do, you know, there it is. So... Bitcoin will, uh, <clears throat> you know, the big the big thing on this is scarcity, that they're not going to have a lot of them. Um, the thing that I think is interesting is, is what's it backed by? You know, what is Bitcoin backed by? What's the dollar backed by and what's Bitcoin backed by? It's you know, those are interesting perception. questions. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think that guns are really important. You know, I'm a gun owner. I'm a huge, you know, I'm a huge a proponent of our Bill of Rights, and, and that particular right is a big one to me. Uh, the person that has guns, you know, well, governments have the biggest guns. So you can try to circumvent those guys, but if you say, let's say I say, okay, you're going to pay your taxes, and we don't accept Bitcoin. Now you you have to liquidate that Bitcoin into whatever they demand. So whoever has the guns in the jails, uh, get to make the rules, right? If you have bigger right. guns in jail, they get the, you know, they, there's a lot of rules and they might say, fine, do all your Bitcoin overseas, hide your account. But when it comes time to pay your taxes, we're going to accept our digital currency from the Federal Reserve someday and track that. And so that, that creates automatic demand for that currency unless you can overthrow their guns in jails. So right, right. I don't know that I'm right. I'm just giving opinion. Don't take what I say as gospel. I'm just giving people food for thought. What I would warn against is dogmatism. I would warn against that. People get in an asset class and they fall in love with their asset class and they become dogmatic about it and prideful about it, almost like a religion to where they'll say, well, this asset class is good and this one's bad and anyone says any different doesn't know what they're talking about. You can poke holes in every asset class and you can find your way to heaven in every asset class. It is an educational issue. The reason I get pissed off about this is, you know, Robert's a master of context. And as soon as someone says, this is the best asset class, uh, there's all the others suck. It, it, it creates a context that says success is a function of an asset rather than a function of personal development. I believe success as investing comes through personal development, education. If, if we are going to elevate a person's financial well-being, it will be a personal development journey for that person, not an advice journey where someone on a podcast said, you should buy ETH and now you're going to go to heaven, right? Well, then, then what I do is of no consequence. If all I got to do is buy an ETH or buy some Bitcoins, then, then what I, I have no value to the world in what I right. teach, none. So I would advise people to be smart and, and unpack the, the chains of dogmatism and, and be able to question the things you do and look at skepticism because that sounds like someone that's getting smarter to me. If I'm in stocks and I can't tell you what's wrong with them, if I'm in ETFs, I can't tell you what's wrong with them and I can't tell you what the risks are, I probably don't know very much about it. And if all I did was preach mutual funds all day long, then you got you got to wonder if I'm in a weird religion, right? right. Especially if the, especially that one. <laughs> hey, let, let me take you back. Uh, really, two. That steps was kind here. of a half rant, wasn't it? I, I know. Sorry I was thinking that, that too. You even used the word pissed in there, so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's close that for, was a half for you. Rant. So we already talked about how what you're talking about with um, cash flowing uh, in your zero to cash flow course applies, but I did want to ask. When you're trying to cash, when you are cash flowing your Bitcoin, are you doing that through your your same brokerage as stocks, or are you having no. to do it on a different brokerage? I do it on a different platform. There's a lot better ones that have come out since I first started. I stuck with Ledger X because I do it for education. 
Here's some of the challenges with this. The spreads are some of the more, more difficult to deal with I've seen. The volume is picking up. When that ETF, <clears throat> when that ETF uh, becomes optionable, it's going to blow up. It's going to be even more. Yeah. I've been hoping for years that the liquidity would improve and that the number of people involved. The more volume we get, the tighter the spreads will become. And we would like tight spreads. We don't want wide spreads as we do this. But nonetheless, we knew how to do it, so we did it. Uh, we did open up a different brokerage, you know, like your basic Schwab account or you know E-Trade account. It'll come. It'll get there, which is another appeal for the ETF. You know, yep. I don't yep. know why it would matter because, Greg, it's like driving a car. Look, I have several makes and models of cars. Uh, they're all made by different manufacturers. And they all have a steering wheel and they have four wheels and they have a, you know, an MP3 player and a windshield wiper and signals. You know, I know how emergency brake. So whether it's a brokerage that you're at and they don't offer, well, then just go learn one because it's still strike prices. It still puts, it still calls, it's still premium, it's still expiration. The dashboard is still the same speedometer, right? You see the same things. Uh, people are so lazy. It's insane to me that someone says, well, I'm not going to learn how to use a different platform. Okay, well, then, then, then be ignorant, right? Don't learn. I am so against people who are anti-learning. I get pissed off at them. You know, it's like, you know, Robert gets pissed at school teachers. I get pissed at parents, you know, because parents don't teach their kids. Since the, when, when the hell was it the school's job to teach my kids? Right. So, so if a person is going to learn... Uh, learn financial education and buy your crypto for a purpose and know what that purpose is and know what the risks are. Um, you know, I, I, I would choose production over capital gain in a, in a catastrophe any day of the week. If people are starving and I have food and I control that, I love that position. Uh, if people are, are fighting and I'm the one producing bullets, uh, I love that position. Right. And, and in chaos, uh, it comes down to what you can buy. Well, I think it comes down to what you can sell. In, in chaos, people are like, well, I want to have a lot of gold so I can buy stuff and survive. Fantastic. Who are you going to give the gold to? The person right. that can offer you what you really, truly wanted. So I'm a big fan of production. I think people that, that control production, you look at Warren Buffett buying B, uh, uh, BNSF, right? British Northern Santa Fe. The rail system controls 40% of the nation's freight. And BNSF is the largest railroad. It would take about a half a bill, about a, about $500 billion and about three decades to rebuild those railroads and get those arteries going again. That's production. That's a position of power. Uh, I love, I love the power of having what other people want. And People don't want Bitcoins. They want the things Bitcoins can buy. So I think you ought to be a producer first in this world. Buy your Bitcoins like a savings account. Hedge against inflation. Uh, that's just my opinion. I could be... I've been wrong so many damn times. <laughs> you know, I've been wrong a million times. So I'm so still we learning. Got, we do got to wrap up. But speaking of learning, um, a, a friend of both of ours, uh, the three of us sat down and there was extreme FOMO, right? You don't, you don't want to miss out on this great Bitcoin oh, opportunity. Oh, yeah, agreed. Yeah. And, but I remember, so it's also a Bitcoin trading is also like a gateway drug. You kind of, you get into trading because I, of Bitcoin. And, I love it. I, I love yeah. it because what happens is, is people hate stocks and love Bitcoin. And so then but, they, they, they learn how to get paid to buy a Bitcoin and they get like, they need to smoke a cigarette after they're done. They're so excited, right? right they're right, so right. stoked about that. And then all of a sudden they say, wait a minute, you can do this with stocks and they're better and it's even faster. It's such a great gateway drug for people to say, oh my gosh, this is, I had no idea I could click and get paid. Yeah, and, and people will part. fight that. The dogmatists will fight, click a mouse and get paid. They'll fight that. They'll say, whoa, 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 whoa. Click a button and get paid. Listen to yourselves. Click, money comes now. Up, down, sideways, doesn't matter. Click, get paid. And that's what zero to cash flow is about. So that, that was kind of the, the lesson that you taught. I'm not going to use his name. Our friend is your, you taught us how to, how to option Bitcoin. And then yeah. you, you showed us how much money you could do that. 
And then you went to the stock side and you said, look at all these options that are available that are so much more profitable. It blew his They're, mind, didn't it? When he it saw blew, it. it I remember the meeting too. we were in. Yeah. 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 It, it was incredible. So yeah, maybe you use Bitcoin to get excited and you learn. But if you take those yeah. lessons that you got all excited to learn and apply them to stock, and I'm not trying to compare the two because I know you hate that. But there was so many better opportunities in the stock market that like he, and he the shifted Bitcoin his market, belief right there. But the Bitcoin market will get better. Uh, the ETFs will force the prices up because it'll increase participation, increase demand, and Bitcoin's shrinking. The, the demand is slow or the supply is going to slow. Uh, it's going to go into a phase where to mine it, you've got to be like, it's going to be really hard to mine them. Yep. Uh, and someday, you know, 2025 ish or whatever, there'll be more uh, Bitcoins than there, or there'll be less Bitcoins than millionaires. And there'll be a, that you will not be able to buy one as, as a millionaire. There'll be millionaires that can't afford one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe that's probably true. Uh, but my big thing is, is, is I, I, I study so much Warren Buffett I just have so much respect for production and American business where we produce stuff and we uh, people consume things. Bitcoins cannot be created nor destroyed. You can't, you know, you won't be able to produce them anymore. It'll be like gold. There's, you can mine it, but it is, there's a finite amount in the earth, right? And Bitcoin will be where you can't produce it and where you can't consume it. You can only transfer it. Yeah. And so as it gets transferred, when Bitcoins are distributed, who's going to get the Bitcoins? The people that get the money, and that's the producers. Yeah. The more people that I serve, the more effective that I, I become. The more people I can serve, the more effective I become. That's it. Uh, that's the game. How do I serve more people? And if so, well, whether it's ETH or gold or Bitcoins or diamonds or whatever, that stuff finds its way into the investor's pocket. Gotcha. Serve people. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, yep. Andy, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. I think we could do like three more. Uh, yeah, it's and awesome. Have so and, and by the way, fun. I'm a fan, I'm a fan of anything that that people that gets people learning. You know, if if Bitcoin was your gate trade drug to financial education, you're going to find that's one of the best things you ever did. But be open, be smart. Don't be dot. Learn how to poke holes in your own asset. And then that asset actually become more valuable to you and you'll, you'll be more profitable in it. Risk management. It's a pillar of investing. Learn what's good and bad about it. Learn the risks. Don't be dogmatic. All right, Andy. That's thank you message. so much. I, I think Thanks, we will Greg. do a, another show on this, but you know, down the road, but yeah, thank you we so got, much. there's Always no learning. shortage of stuff for me to learn. And again, I want to emphasize, uh, people, you know, haters. I, I know what the comments will be on this one. Cause the, First of all, everyone that's trying to sell Bitcoin is going to hop in comments and say, you know, most of the people that it's like the gold dealers, right? No one is more bullish on gold than gold dealers. Right. And, and there'll be haters and you don't know, find learn. That's all I'm saying. I can be wrong. Learn, 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 learn. Fair enough. I think that's, I think that's today's lesson really. So learn. Andy, we'll see you next week. Everybody. Love you, brother. We'll Zero see to it. cash flow is free. Love to hear the comments on the people that took it. Just I love to hear that. I, I think it's a phenomenal course. It's a simple course. It's not that much time to commit to. Uh, so anyways, get the course, leave the comments, and we'll see you all next week. Take care, Thank everyone. You. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network. 